Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A heated debate over whether to continue school of choice in one Macomb County community. She's going to make a recommendation that you prefer over the one that I prefer. No, okay. I'm sorry. I'm going to follow parliamentary procedure. We haven't even been able to ask questions on any of the options. How the district is now moving forward. Tonight, the House delivering the article of impeachment against former President Trump to the Senate, setting the stage for the fourth impeachment trial in our nation's history. Let's start things off tonight, though, with Storm Tracker 4 and the snow moving into Metro Detroit. Some communities already seeing snow showers, in fact. Yeah, Ben, most of us haven't needed to use the snowblower this season, but that's about to change. I think so. Hope there's plenty of gas in it and those shoveling muscles are ready to go uh, because we're going to see our biggest burst right during the morning commute and then I'll continue through most of the day. Let's go to Storm Tracker 4. As you mentioned, it's the south zone that's getting it now. You can see some of those darker shades. We had a lot of activity on radar so far tonight, but really nothing outside of flurries and maybe some light freezing drizzle reported. But you can see further south of there, there's plenty of snow across northern parts of Indiana. That stuff is all headed here. And those purple shades indicate freezing rain. And we may see a little bit of that before everything is said and done tomorrow, but it's going to be a very minor part of this forecast. Here's the timing. As we go overnight, we'll see that snow gradually start to move in 5, 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, right during the heart of the commute. You will see plenty of snow. Now, this is pretty much overdoing uh, the freezing stuff. I don't think we'll see that much, but there will be at least some freezing drizzle mixed in. By noon, a lot of the accumulating snow will be done in the south zone, but it will continue through the afternoon for areas north of 8 Mile, giving us a pretty healthy accumulation by the time it is all said and done. In fact, winter weather advisory is now in effect until 4 o'clock for the entire area. And even though we're going to miss out on the big part of the system, that's out there across parts of Iowa and northern Illinois, we are still going to get our share of accumulation. So coming up, guys, we'll look at snow totals and how much we will be using that snowblower in just a few minutes. Yeah. Okay, Ben, thank you. And remember, Local 4 News Today is the only morning news in town with two meteorologists. Brandon Rue and Paul Gross will be tracking the snow overnight as the system moves through. They get started at 4.30 a.m. For the second year in a row, it was a big battle in the Lance Cruz School Board over whether to continue participating in School of Choice. After a contentious hours-long meeting, the district will continue in the program. Mara McDonald live with more on this. And uh, Mara, the program will look different, though, next year. It will, Devin. There are going to be some changes here, and we're going to go through those in just one second. But I think what the board wanted everybody who is a parent of a child who is a school of choice child in Las Cruz to know is that their child's education is secure. Nobody's getting kicked out. Nobody's going anywhere. Let me show you. So the chair does not recognize any of the speakers who are in the chair. The chair recognizes that Amy had a question. Amy will speak and because that is the because she is going to make a recommendation that you prefer over the one that I prefer. No, okay. I'm sorry. I'm going to follow parliamentary procedure. We haven't even been able to ask questions. Clearly a frustrating yeah. meeting for the board members and frustrating for anybody at home trying to follow along on a Zoom board meeting with mic problems and members talking over each other. Can we please stress that civility and not name calling is what is expected. At the end of the debate and looking at multiple options, including no school of choice period, Las Cruz will continue to participate. After a 5-2 vote, this is what the new plan will look like. The big change is this, where the district offered unlimited seats for students in K through eight, the unlimited will now be K through five, with the remainder of middle school at 60 seats, which is about what the district has enrolled right now. Grades nine, 10, and 11 all remain where they were. Board members had differing viewpoints. Some see nothing but benefit. Others see a financial drain on the district. Members of the public had a chance to weigh in with their thoughts as well. In Macomb County, it is a winner take all system. Uh, and if we take ourselves out of the system, we'll be on the back foot and we'll end up hurting our district and costing us money and costing us programs and staff over time. Back here live at the end of the day, is it a huge change numbers wise? It does not appear so, but still that compromise took hours of heated debate and that call for civility you heard that wasn't really meant towards the public. That was really meant towards each other on that board. Kimberly, Devin, back to you. Fair enough. All right, Mara. 
Two people who were taken in for questioning in connection with a deadly shooting in Harrison Township have now been released. The Macomb County Sheriff's Office says a 26 year old Redford man was shot and killed just before 1 p.m. while trying to get inside a condo. It happened at the Harrison Woods Lane condominium complex east of I-94 and north of Metro Parkway. Investigators say two people were inside the apartment and one of them opened fire, killing the man. They were both brought in for questioning and released without being charged. Now to the coronavirus numbers from over the weekend with the state reporting 3,011 new cases over the past two days. That average is out to a little more than 1,500 cases per day. The state is also reporting 35 new deaths. The state is now tracking new cases of the UK COVID variant with 13 cases of the variant in Washtenaw County and four in Wayne County. This variant does not yet appear to cause more severe disease. Our current test can identify it, and our current vaccines appear to work against it. But this new, more easily transmitted virus is still very concerning. We do not want to have to go backwards to slow the great progress we've already made. In addition to the four cases in Wayne County, the health department is also looking into four additional COVID cases where people had close contact with the four who tested positive for the variant. Today, Reverend Wendell Anthony received his first dose of the COVID vaccine at Sinai Grace Hospital. President of the NAACP Detroit chapter has criticized misinformation about the vaccine and is calling on all Detroiters to get vaccinated. I'm encouraging folk to take it. Uh, I'd rather have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. And so that's why I'm here. We have a county by county breakdown of the coronavirus numbers, including the city of Detroit. Just head to click on Detroit.com. As you've just heard from Dr. Caldoun, the new COVID-19 variant transmits more easily. And unfortunately, it's gotten loose within the University of Michigan Athletics Department. Several players testing positive has forced a two week stoppage of all varsity sports. Jason Colthorpe is live in Ann Arbor tonight. Jason, these players aren't wild about being in quarantine, that's for sure. No, they sure aren't, Kim, and so much so they've started an online petition banding together to fight back against the state, which they say is making them out to be scapegoats. Normally, these parking spaces outside the Chrysler Center would be filled and inside basketball coaches for the highly ranked men's and women's teams would be getting ready for upcoming games. But sports on campus came to a sudden halt Saturday after a handful of athletes tested positive for the COVID-19 variant. Athletes and staff from sports, including tennis, track and field, wrestling, hockey, volleyball, gymnastics, all must now stop and quarantine for two weeks after a strong suggestion from the MDHHS. I want to um, commend the University of Michigan for taking the actions that they did. We, we think that those are the right steps to keep people safe. Essentially, this was, yes, a mandate from the state. Track and field and cross-country runner Christian Hubaker is part of a movement to get the unaffected teams back to competition now. We, as a student-athlete body, wanted to see a team-by-team uh, response to this instead of a, a blanket policy. He started an online petition Monday on behalf of the Coalition of Student Athletes and it racked up thousands of signatures in just a few hours. Just frustrated that we didn't really have a voice in the matter um, and, and you know we were doing all the right things um, going into um, that mandate, doing things uh, the right way um, that, that was still kind of taken from us very abruptly. Yeah, that number of signatures, by the way, soaring past uh, 4,000 as of last check, and it includes some prominent names, uh, members of the football team, basketball team, hockey team, they say. And uh, I did put in a couple calls to uh, athletics tonight just to get their take on this petition. Uh, conspicuously quiet. Didn't get a call back on that. Back to you. I wonder, Jason, could they handle this team by team? How often do they even interact? Well, Hubaker says that, you know, it, certain players will have roommates that might be on one team or another. But he said in his case, uh, he hasn't seen anyone from another team since he came on campus in August. So he says it would be really easy to be able to do this team by team because a lot of players just don't interact with other squads. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's not happening here. Yeah. Back to you. Okay. Jason, thank you. Congress takes the next major step toward a trial against former President Trump with the House sending 
the article of impeachment won to the Senate. Trial set to begin February 8th. That's two weeks from today. It will be the fourth impeachment trial in our country's history. For a conviction, 17 Republican senators presumably would have to join with the Democrats. Unlike the first impeachment trial, Trump faces just one single impeachment charge of incitement of insurrection. We also still don't know how long this trial is going to take because the Democrats have yet to reveal whether they will present witnesses in the trial. Two men are now facing charges in the deadly shooting of two women at a Clinton Township apartment complex. The two women were shot and killed Friday night outside the Nottingham Apartments off Gratiot. The two suspects, ages 19 and 20, were later arrested after crashing a Hellcat Dodge Charger into an, a pole on 8 Mile following a high-speed chase. Both men are charged with first-degree murder and remain hospitalized from their injuries. They are expected to be arraigned via video tomorrow. The Livonia City Council wants more time to decide on partnering social workers with law enforcement. The council voted to delay a decision on adding two full-time social workers to the police department. The vote came after public comment, a presentation on mental health calls to police, and comment from police and judges. Livonia's mayor recommended the proposal to help officers in responding to mental health-related calls. Still ahead, Apple is issuing a warning for iPhone users. Safety concern, in fact, involving all four models of the iPhone 12. We'll tell you about it. And a rabid fox attacks two children playing on a trampoline. The quick actions of the boy's grandfather that saved the day. But first, let's check back in with Ben. Kim, Storm Tracker 4 has got its eyes on snow, which is just starting to move into the south zone. We're going to see plenty of it for the morning commute. I'll tell you how bad that's going to be and what we end up with when Local 4 News at 11 continues.